Read from our epistle text. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it, for no one can lie a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I don't think there's a person in the sanctuary today that can say that they have not seen the wages of sin. I mean, it's clear. It's right in front of our face all the time. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And because of that, we die. How often we hear the phrase, why do bad things happen to good people? No one really ever asks, why do good things happen to bad people? We live in a world that we desire fairness. Everything needs to be fair. We have to be on a level playing field. Everyone gets the same advantage. But why do we not ask? Why do good things happen to bad people? I mean, isn't that the question that we should be asking ourselves? Scripture tells us no one is good, not even one. Of course, speaking outside of Christ. I've seen what sin can do. I've seen what sin does do. As your pastor, a lot of times, I, most times, I get to see behind the door that you would never want to go into. I've seen what cancer can do. I've seen what lupus can do. I've seen what calamities man brings on to other men. Dementia. One of the most damnable of all the ailments. Having to lose your mother twice. These are the wages of sin. <coughs> when I was growing up, there was a man that could always make me laugh who would, I just thought was larger than life. He raised three wonderful boys and he was married to my aunt, my Uncle Stuart. And I saw what cancer did to him. Because we sin, evil is in the world, and we have no one to blame except ourselves. So before you are quick to point the finger at other people and say, I can't forgive because they did this to me, or etc., all of those things, making excuses for your sin, Realize that somewhere, someone is laying on their deathbed, coming to terms with just how sinful they really are. And don't you dare miss the opportunity to repent and to be forgiven. This is not a game. We are not playing. We don't come to church in the same way that we go watch a movie at the theater. Or that we meet at the Civitans or the VA or whatever it may be, the, the, the VFW. I don't think people want to meet at the VA. I still got that wrong. You always going to let me hang here. Nobody's going to help me. We don't come here to congregate just so that we can have the advantage of fellowship. Fellowship is simply 
the, the effect of being in the presence of Christ. Do you see how we've turned that around? When I was in Louisville, I heard the term all the time, we're fellowshipping. We're fellowshipping with one another. What does that mean? Being in a fellowship is the affect of being in the presence of Christ. I love all of you. But nothing makes me happier than to be here with you doing what we're doing right now. When you leave here, you're going to have to face the things that are the affect of sin. You're going to bury your mother your father, your children. Cancer will whittle away your uncle to nothing. And the man that you once looked at with such awe and adoration will be lowered into the ground like everyone else. I'm going to quote Gene here, I believe. Correct me if I get it wrong. Everyone's grave is the same size. Did I get that right? But for the Christian, it's different. It may be the same size, but it's not the same shape for the Christian. The grave for the Christian is in the, si is in the sign of the cross. We are buried, therefore, with Him in baptism into death. And we have been raised with Him into the newness of life. Do you, and I'm serious, do you believe this or do you not? Dear family of Augustana Lutheran Church, what we do here is not child's play. It's the matter of life and death. It's the matter of everlasting life and everlasting death. There was once a indulgent seller extraordinaire during the Reformation time. And there was a crippled girl, and he looked, and uh, the seller looked at, to the mother and said, "Woman, make sure that when the time comes, your daughter has the ability to run to Christ." What evil is that? What he meant was, pay up. And Luther said, no, Christ runs to us. We are crippled. We are infirmed. But Christ comes to us. If you desire to build a house, you take the time to make sure that the foundation is secure. The foundation is the very thing that takes the most amount of time. Am I wrong, Mark? Because if that is faulty, everything else will fall apart. So give thanks to God that when you have to do the hardest things in life, like burying your children, or your uncle, or your parents, or your spouse, Remember the foundation in which they are being laid into. For one, for no one can lay a foundation other than which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Christ our Lord, crucified for you. Christ our Lord, risen for you in your baptism. Believe, confess. Study. Open your Bibles. Read it. Because there you'll find how much God truly loves you. That He would give His only begotten Son. That whoever would believe in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God the Father sent His Son to die. To die for you. Understand, dear mothers who have buried their children, 
God the Father knows that pain. For he buried his son. But also know that because he raised his son back up from the dead, so he will raise your loved ones as well. When Ashley and I donated that painting back there that I get to look at from here every Sunday and realize that I'm not doing as good a job as the guy who painted that, I look underneath it and I see baptism on the left, the Lord's Supper in the middle, the Office of the Keys of Absolution on the right, and then underneath you have Luther standing in the pulpit pointing to Christ who is being crucified, and on the other side of him the congregation. And Luther is merely pointing at Christ saying, there is your sin. The wages of sin is death, the death of Christ. There is your sin, look at it. There was once a man who was in a concentration camp, and I've told this before, who was a little boy during Nazi Germany, and they had lined up all of the people who were going to be executed that day, and they hung them all. Only one survived the, init the initial impact because he was a boy by the age of seven. And he stood there squirming at the end of the noose. And a man behind the, the rider leans up and he says, where is your God now, boy? Look at that, how evil that is. And the boy said, my God is there at the end of that noose. Suffering with those who suffer. Christ Jesus, our Lord, has given everything unto us. When I look at that painting, and then I look up to the part that is right underneath the foot of the cross, you can see written there, and I die pray that you will never leave the sanctuary without reading those words. You can turn and look. Has anybody noticed those words? For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen.